Welcome to Your Wellness MD Podcast. This is where family physician and wellness expert, Dr. Daniela Stein and her life coach sister, JB, share holistic solutions for your everyday health and wellness challenges. We explore the connection between a healthy body, mind, and soul, and share tips that will enable you to thrive. Thanks for joining us today. JB here, time for our podcast. Hello, Daniela. Hi, from Dr. Daniela Stein. I live in sunny California and I grew up in sunny South Africa. Sunshine makes me happy. I especially realize that when we have what they call here in California, May gray and June gloom, that I was built for sunshine. Sometimes we don't see the sun for seven or 10 days at a time. And that's easily some of the worst weeks of the year for me. That said, we know that vitamin D is important. Danila, will you explain why it is so important? Yes, I'd love to, JB. So vitamin D is often called our sunshine vitamin due to our skin's incredible ability to absorb ultraviolet light from the sun and then to form vitamin D, also called cholecalciferol, in the skin from 7-dehydrocholesterol. So what that means, it's a type of cholesterol that we have in our skin. And when our skin comes in contact with UV light, it forms vitamin D. This vitamin D we can get from diet as well, but unfortunately it doesn't naturally occur in a lot of foods. So primarily we get it from the sun. Now we wear a lot of sunblock. How do, mm. I mean, does sunblock block the vitamin D? Yes. So it blocks this ability. And with my kids as well, our three little kids, and we believe that the damaging effects of the sun outweigh the benefit that we get from absorbing that vitamin D through our skin. So even with my little kids, always when they're in the sun, they have to wear a hat. They have sunscreen on that blocks everything out and they have long sleeve swimming shirts on. So we do not get enough vitamin D from our skin the way we were naturally designed to do it. So we can then get vitamin D from our diet. So first I should maybe explain why we need vitamin D. We need vitamin D for normal calcium homeostasis. So that is our body's ability to absorb calcium from our diet is directly influenced by vitamin D. And you know, we need vitamin D for strong bones. So growing up in South Africa, we often saw rickets where children has impaired mineralization of their growing skeleton. And then in adults, we call it um, osteomalacia. When people in Canada, where I work, I see that quite often, where people have a vitamin D deficiency. And because of that, even though they have enough calcium in their diet, they can't absorb the calcium as well. Wow. Um, Any other reasons why we need it? So vitamin D helps your immune system to fight inflammation. Fascinating studies are now being done to see the effect of vitamin D on COVID-related illness. So I work in a big hospital in Toronto, and we've just been through our third wave of the pandemic. We've seen quite a big number of COVID patients. And because of this, the fact that some patients get really sick with COVID, other patients don't get as sick. There's been so many studies done all over the world to try to find out what are the different factors. And Although we haven't found a cure, there are some studies that has shown that vitamin D are one of the factors that help to build us our immune system, which help us to fight off viral infections. Wow. Didn't know that about COVID, that how critical vitamin D is as well. And then I've heard that oral health Mm. are impacted by vitamin D. Oh, definitely. So um, vitamin D lowers the risk of tooth decay and gum disease. It helps, and then it also um, boosts your immune system in your mouth. So your mouth is full of bacteria, and then vitamin D helps to fight off infection and inflammation. Wow. Anything else vitamin D helps with? (laughs) Oh, many things. (laughs) I'm on a roll. The other thing it helps with is to treat hypertension. So hypertension is high blood pressure. As we age, the inside of our arteries become more stiff, and as people get older with each decade of their life, you're at a higher risk of developing hypertension. So in 2019, there was a big review published in a magazine called Current Protein and Peptide Science, where they suggest that vitamin D can play a role in the treatment of high blood pressure. And they found that even short-term deficiency can raise your blood pressure. And then 
if you go through periods of time where your blood pressure is higher, that increases end organ damage. That would be things like your kidneys or your eyes or your brain that gets damaged by the high blood pressure levels. That's so interesting. I know that me, for example, for the last 10, 15, maybe more than it, that years, I really wear sunscreen as much as possible. Mm. So how do I know whether I get enough vitamin D? So in Canada, actually, our recommendations currently is for everyone to take a thousand units of vitamin D every day. We don't even have to test. For you, because I know you get so much more sun, you could ask your family physician to test your vitamin D levels. Wow. And I've heard that there are some other downsides of not enough vitamin D, such as weight management. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah. So there was a study published in the British Journal of Nutrition that found that in overweight or obese women with low calcium levels, if they got a supplement of vitamin D with calcium, that they were more successful shedding extra pounds than people who only took a placebo and not the vitamin D supplement. And what you mentioned earlier about your mood, that's a big thing. So studies have shown that sun can really brighten your mood. And so can vitamin D. There was in 2017, there was a review published in an article called Neuropsychology, where researchers found a significant relationship between depression and vitamin D deficiency. Interesting. And you've also mentioned to me before that strong vitamin D can help fighting cancer. That is absolutely fascinating. And you can actually read more on the website, the National Cancer Institute's website. But they found some evidence that vitamin D does have cancer-fighting powers. They've done some experimental studies where they can show that vitamin D can slow or even prevent the development of cancer cells and tumors in mice because it promotes cellular differentiation and then it decreases that cancer cell growth and it stimulates actually cell death. We call that apoptosis and it reduces tumor blood vessel formation. We call that angiogenesis. So that's supplying the cancer cells with blood. Wow, that's fascinating. Now, it's very clear that there are many benefits of vitamin D. And it sounds like ideally a supplement is recommended because of the fact that we don't get as much sun or we protect ourselves from the sun, rightly mm. so. In terms of foods that are sources of vitamin D, any specific foods that you can recommend? Yes. So in general, I try to advise rather foods rather than supplements for most things. But unfortunately, there is not a lot of foods that naturally have a lot of vitamin D. And then some people have intestinal malabsorption where they're not, because vitamin D is a fat absorbable vitamin, where they're not even to absorb it well. But say you're a normal healthy person and you're able to absorb vitamin D, foods that are very high in vitamin D are fatty foods such as swordfish or rainbow trout or salmon. Here in Canada, we have the best salmon. Cod liver oil, snapper is a type of fish as well. It's an egg yolk, tuna, and even in mushrooms. So we have, in Canada, it's mandated that all milk products must be fortified with vitamin D. So interesting, you know, many of my patients think, oh, I'm good with vitamin D because I get it through my, through milk. But interestingly, milk on its own doesn't naturally have any vitamin D. It's just because it's been recognized for a long time that we don't get up enough vitamin D in. So all milk products, plant-based milk substitutes or margarine, infant formula, even in the hospital when people can't eat and they must get feeds directly into the stomach, those type of feeds, all of them are fortified with vitamin D. Wow, that is really interesting. To be honest, I have not been taking a vitamin D supplement ever. <laughs> So I'll definitely start taking vitamin D as a supplement. Any other advice you could give anyone about vitamin D? So to give it to your son as well, right? When I deliver a baby shear, that's one of the first thing I tell mums is you can get a drop of vitamin D that you can actually put on your nipple when baby nurses. And usually our drops for babies have 600 units vitamin D in it. And then for adults, it's a thousand units. Some of my patients in hospital, when they have a type of malabsorption syndrome or if they maybe have kidney disease, because your kidneys are quite important in the metabolism of calcium as well, when they have a kidney disease, 
we often prescribe much higher doses of vitamin D. The caveat is that vitamin D is fat absorbable. So that means that you don't excrete it in your urine. All the other vitamins, if you get too much of that in, you'll just urinate it out again. It's not a problem. But specifically, vitamin D is one of the whole, um, the vitamins, so vitamin A, D, E, and K. Those four vitamins are fat soluble. So you do not excrete that through your urine. So it can become toxic in your body. It's very rare, very, very rare to see toxicity. So if you take a, a thousand units a day and even some of my patients, I need to prescribe much higher doses. But for those patients that I prescribe off-label higher doses, I'll monitor their blood levels every month or two to see when their vitamin D picks up. For you, you'll be safe if you take one pill a day. Oh, and what I do with my kids is I give them gummies. That There's chewable vitamin D. So for babies, it's good to have that oil drop. But then for adults, and even for my husband, he refuses to take any supplements or any pills for when the kids get their chewable vitamin D gummies, then he's okay with taking his. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Dr. D, for sharing the importance of vitamin D with us today. Looking forward to connecting again, but until then, sunshine and vitamin D to you. Ah, take care. Keep well. Thanks for spending your time with your wellness MD doc, Daniela and JB today. For more episodes, subscribe to our podcast. We would love to connect with you at info at wellnessmdhelp.com. And remember, you were created to thrive. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this podcast.